um, so you've been here a week. Yes. And your first trip to South Africa. Mm-hmm. And impressions? Um, it's very diverse. I mean, Cape Town couldn't be more different than Johannesburg. Yeah. Johannesburg is where we started off. And, yeah. Um, it's dry and it's cold. It is. It's very kind of barren. Yeah. And <laughs> I couldn't really get an idea of um, where the, you know, like where the center was, like where the yes, center yeah. was or yeah, where the, so everyone kind of, yeah, like yes, there was no there's real, no, hub, like, no. Kept on you. Mm. a better sense of a hub, mm. it's just smaller. But we had a really good time there, um, we went to Soweto and yeah. we had, um, Did the whole thing. we got a tour around like Nelson yes. Mandela's house and museum and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, we went to a game park and we got to play with all Lion cubs. Oh, cool. Yeah. See, most South Africans never get to do that. That's, that's I know. That's, that's what everyone was saying. Yeah. They were saying, I've, yeah. <laughs> I've never done that. Um, it's the same in Australia, yeah. though. Like, I've never been to Ayers Rock. Yes. You know, and most Australians haven't. And every, every, yeah, everyone else who travels. That goes yeah. to, yeah, yeah. That's the first place they want to go. Yeah. So, um, and then um, yesterday in Durban, we got to mm. go and see the the biggest dolphin in right. captivity. Oh, uh, sea World. Sea World place, yeah. 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 What? Gambit, that was its Gambit. name. It was so cute. Yeah, cute. <laughs> yeah, it was beautiful. It was yeah, 500, it like 530 kilograms or something, but um, yes. could make it. So, and then so. Um, you played in Joburg. What <laughs> was I played a couple of shows in Johannesburg, mm. and they were, they were really good, um, really just kind of small, mm. intimate shows. Yes, and yeah. it, was, it was really nice to just get back down to the basics because... Mm. Um, in Australia, I tour with a full band, yeah. um, and I've, we've just done a tour in the US and the UK with my band. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, that's right. I saw mm. something in Cuba. That's right. yeah, yeah. That must have been great. Yeah, it was. It was the first time I've done like a <clears throat> overseas tour with my band, mm. so it was really cool. Yeah. Um, and then over here, it's yeah, we've stripped it back down. Because, mm. I mean, we're sort of on the tail end of this, aren't we, really? In, uh, because this album is... You know, it's more than two years old. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, it was released in 2004 mm. in Australia and yeah. then 2005 in America. In America, okay. Yeah, so. And do you spend much time in the States? Because that's. Yeah, I have actually. All game all together. It is, yeah. I recorded the album in the States. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, then, that. yeah I have spent quite a bit of time in the States. I've, I've done um, endless support tours. I've really? Been, yeah, yeah, supported a lot of people. Um, so, I've, yeah, I've managed to get a small fan live fan base mm. over there. So. It's difficult, isn't it? Because, I mean, that's even more spread out and you literally have to spend yeah. 12 months of the year touring just to yeah, yeah, yeah. get people to... Exactly. And I've been doing that for a couple of years. So yeah. Just, there's just so many little cities that you can go to and yeah. town. And they, then you can fill out. Yeah, exactly. Kind of just, yeah. There's so many people as well, yeah. which is great for the industry because yeah. that's something we don't have here. Our industry is so small yeah. that we, we suffer from the same sort of... Yeah. You know, um, Typical industry nonsense that I think every country has, you know, yeah. about trying to break acts and yeah, you know, getting behind them. And, yeah, yeah. And it's it's interesting. It's I don't know if it happens in Australia that way. It's when in your own country, you it, it took someone overseas to actually take the time to realise what you were about and buy into you before your own country. Yeah. Says, oh yeah, no, great. And then all of a sudden you become you, you're very Australian all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah, that's kind of happened to that's mm, happened to a few Australian artists. Mm, I think it's happened to every every band that doesn't you know, I mean yeah. Dave Matthews. I mean Dave Matthews is you know, he was born here, he, he's, he grew up here for a couple of years, but yeah. he didn't spend his formative years here, but Did he really? Oh, yeah. every South African claims him in South Africa. Yeah, so right. he, you know, he comes out here once a year for a yeah. while. But you know, um, Richard E. Grant is another one, you know, who's an actor who grew up in Swaziland but um, and nobody gave him the time of day and yeah. all of a sudden he became sort of popular then it's like yeah. oh, it's out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, then they claim you back and yeah. you know, which is interesting. But what was so it? you claim what you want to claim uh, and you yeah. reject what you and want to reject. Yeah. Like. Well for you you didn't I mean you were in a position where you were knocking on a hundred doors trying to get a deal. It was the other way around. You yeah, know. it kinda it happened actually quite easily. I was mm. very lucky it, it almost fell into my lap. I I um I won a radio competition mm. in Australia when I was seventeen and the prize for that competition was to get my song on the radio. Okay. So at that point, I only had about four or five songs to my mm-hmm. name, and um, and I got signed with about that many songs as well. Mm-hmm. So um, I was very lucky, and, and I got um, signed a record deal with Eleven, 
But then you signed that in the States or was that back in Australia? That was in Australia. I signed okay. that for Australia yeah. and then the, uh, the next year I signed in America. Because what was interesting for me is that I spent um, to Shabby here in LA and KCW was one of my favorite stations and I still listen to it on the, on the internet and, and they right. are a station that's been, yeah, they've been responsible for really identifying some amazing talent over yeah. the last decade or two. Yeah, they've been great. Yeah, you know, they've been going for years, but when Chris Doritos was there and... I mean, yeah, he's the one who kind yeah. of took interest in me. I mean, they, and they are this little community-based station, yeah. campus, or essentially campus station, and mm. they, they have such power when it comes to breaking artists. I mean, yeah, I think they every time they're very respected. Back, yeah, every time you go back, you almost feel obligated to, well, not obligated, but you would want to go and do a set, you know, yeah. do a live set there. Yeah, definitely. They, they, they have broken a lot. Well, yeah. They recognise the talent that you, yeah. Yeah, you can have. It's kind, of, it's kind of similar to Triple J, actually, in Australia, the station that yeah. broke me over there. Yeah. And um, that was, I mean, KCRW, when I first came over to America to, to um, sign a record, well, to record yeah. shop, whatever. Yes. Good. Um, the company shop. I um, the uh, um, showcase was in the KCRW. Oh, in the yeah. Yeah. So we got all the record company execs to come Brilliant. in, and I did like a live radio thing. Yeah. So that was how. That Again, it's got a nice sort of aesthetic and a nice feel about it. Doesn't feel sort of all sterile, and, you know. Yeah, well, everyone, everyone there is really passionate about yeah, music. And, which is great, because yeah. that's something that, again, like in, even in this country, the industry's not big enough to really embrace it in that way. Yeah. You know, whereas, you know, numbers just dictate that you can do that kind of thing, yeah. which is great. But, I mean, for you, it must have been, because you, you can, your, your talent was, was realised from day one, you know, you've literally, it's just been a, an obvious progression. Really, yeah. In some ways, hasn't it? You know, you yeah, I mean, um, I haven't really had to go through that struggle of wanting to get, like, trying to get signed, or, like, yes. wanting to get yeah. signed, you know. Yeah. I was just like, I was still at school at the time, and I was like, wow, someone wants to give me a record deal, that's a crazy... That yeah, and and that was the moment where I thought, maybe I can actually make a full-time career oh, out of this, oh. rather. Because I thought, you know, when I decided that I wanted to sing, I was about 13 or 14, and, and um, maybe even younger... And I thought that it was something that I was just going to do in my free time, or I, I, you know, I'd established, I'd established that I love to do it, and yeah. that I wanted to do it, but I didn't know that I could make it a full time thing. I thought I'd have a proper job on the side, yeah, and then a yeah, a real job. As your parents would say. Yeah. yeah. Well, my dad wanted me to go to university, you know, right, right. like have that security. It's a university of life. Yeah. <laughs> and as soon as I got a record deal, he's like, okay, maybe you don't have to go <laughs> to university. Uh, and then. Um, has it been really non-stop since then? Um, well, I mean, when I signed, I, you know, I was back August of 2001, mm. and um, and on condition of signing, I said, you know, I've, I hope you know that I've been planning to go backpacking overseas mm. with my friend from school, and um, I still want to do that. I don't want to go straight into this. I don't want to record an album for, you know, at least a year. Speak to... to a big step to not take because you'd sort of go, well, what happens if it's not him? Uh, you know, well, I mean, I signed it. Yeah. It was, like, so, like, yeah. It, you know, yeah, yeah. they were legally <laughs> contracted <laughs> to me to release, release yeah. at least one album. Uh, uh, so, um, you know, I didn't actually give it that much thought. Like, uh, there was a lot of people around me saying, you know, um, yeah, no, 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 yeah. why, you know, <clears throat> jump on this, you know, ball well, as so it's rolling. Well, why that's yeah. because it's Typically, they, they, you know... Well, while there was a little bit of public interest because of the radio exactly. competition and yeah. my song was getting yeah. played a little bit on the radio, and I thought, you know, I only had a handful of songs, right. and this is something that I was really... had wanted to do for years, and I'd been saving yeah. up for it. And, and um, you know, a lot of people around me were saying also that once you get started um, with yeah, your first yeah. album, you it's know, over, there's yeah. no time between your first and your second album, and it just keeps on so progressing and gets faster. Down. Yeah, yeah, and there's no way that I could take a year yeah. off and go backpacking now. So yeah. I'm, I'm glad I got it out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Mm. and uh, I mean uh, the obvious question is that you know this has been your calling card. It's um, it's yeah. You know, it, it, have you do you have another five songs for you know, for, for for the next record? Um, I have more than five <laughs> songs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got I've got about um, you know I think I've got enough for the next record. Yeah. No, not for, I've got about forty actually. Mm. Um, 
and I'm, I'm actually kind of getting ready to make the next mm. one soon. So is it time? Um, will, will you go back to the States to do that, do you think? Or? Uh, I think so. I think yeah. I'm going to be recording in LA. And I mean, what's changed for you? I mean, when you listen back to this record and you listen to the kind of stuff that you're writing now, is there, is there a radical shift or is it just there's there again that sort of general um, progression? I don't know about a radical shift. I think I'm definitely progressing as a songwriter and I think I'm improving. Um, it's, I think I'm just basically growing up mm. and maturing a bit. So, you know, um, what I write about is maybe a little bit more complex than mm. what I did write about. Um, N not necessarily about deeper issues, just I think yeah. the way that I that I write my lyrics is, um, to me, more more interesting and more in depth. Mm. Is it still yeah. is it still exciting to play these songs? I mean, do you get the same kind of buzz doing these songs? Live, as you yeah. Than when you um, you know, it's like I go through phases. Mm. Like you know, depending on what's happening in my life at the moment, mm. I can adapt the songs to what's happening. Yeah. You know, at the moment, um, sometimes. I guess just get really over it and I think, God, am I going to have to play this for the rest of my life? Yeah, it's exactly. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. But then, you know, when I when I play these songs with my band, um, there's also there was, there's always a bit of a different element. Mm. And there's always do like a yeah, death metal version. Yeah, it's funny actually, we did the song The Sound of White, one of the concerts, we actually did a, um, a bluegrass version, no which is like a bit of a joke, but now, now ever since that, people have been rec requesting the be bluegrass version. Be careful when you do that. Yeah. I know. Yeah. But it wasn't, it was just a joke, and they came over, we laughed. I know, the, we, we completely um, <clears throat> divided the audience on that one too, like, there's a lot of people going, what does she think she's doing? <laughs> she's butchering this song, and then yeah. some people are going, yeah, this is great. What's been your biggest um, uh, accolade, I suppose, in the sense for you as a as a, as a musician? Because obviously you've got um, musicians and, and uh, bands that you look up to. Have, they, have any of, mm. have any of them acknowledged your work? Have, you know, have you heard anything like that? Someone that you respected coming on, going, "This is a you know, this is an exceptional body of work." Um, I've you know, pretty much everyone I've toured with has mm. been really supportive. Um, like I, I toured with um, the Finn Brothers mm. from you know, yeah. Crowd House, yeah. Sweet End, mm. and um, you know they were really supportive of, of my live shows. That every night they were congratulating yeah, the me. coming aboard with us. Do a song. Have you, have you done anything like? Um, I have. Um, I've recorded with uh, I don't know if you know Tim Rogers. Yes. Yes. Um, yes, yes yeah, yes. I did a couple of duets with him on his album. And, okay. Um, who else? Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, that's about it. Mm. I've done any other duets. Can you remember? No, you're about to do one with Paul Kelly. Oh, yeah, Paul Kelly. By the way, just throw that in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, I haven't done it yet. That's yeah, why it's yeah. fresh in my memory. Mm. But yeah, when I go back, I'm about to do a duet with him. So. And then you like doing that kind of stuff? I mean. Yeah, too, I do. I mean, if, if it's someone that I admire, mm. definitely. Um, I'm not interested in really collaborating with anyone um, if, if I don't like mm. the music. And producers and people like that, are you sort of aware of who's out there who you'd like to sort of work with? Yeah, I mean, um, I am really interested in, you know, working with um, Mitchell Froome, who mm. did all the credit yeah, cap. Um, and, you know, I'm a big fan of Ethan Johns, mm. who does run. Yeah, yeah. It did Brian Adams and yeah. Yeah, Rufus Wainwright. And yeah, yeah. Many others. See that twang's, <laughs> twang's coming back again. I can see there's a country record coming out at some point in your career. Well, it's funny because I've written a few songs that could, mm. like, depending mm. where you take them production wise, yeah. they could be quite country. Yeah. Now I'm going to put, put the brakes on that one a little bit at the moment, though. Right? It's okay, country's cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's in you, you see. It's in it country. is, like, I, I actually do it. like a lot of that country yeah. music. So. I've escaped it. Yeah. Well, it's worked for people like Ryan Adams, I suppose, but then, I mean, he kept, he kept, kept on shifting it too, just to mess with people, I think, just when they put yeah. to pin him down. Yeah. You know, do a rock record and you go, okay. And, that's, yeah. and they're equally good, so. I think my next record's going to be a little bit of a mixture, actually, because I have got a few folky country songs like that, and then I've got a, a, some ballads, and then mm. I've got a, a few rockier yeah. songs. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Mm. I'm sure that every artist has that in them, that you just want to, you know, you, you need a bit of angst. <laughs> well, especially... If you're angry about something and you sit down and write a song, it's, it's not going to come out as a ballad, you know. Yeah. It's going to come out well, as something. Yeah, you, you know. pay attention. I'm just about to get pissed off. Yeah. 
Yeah, <laughs> I have got a song on it. Yeah. yeah. And so you, you go back there, you do the duet, then what happens? Then there's a really back into the studio before the end of the year? Um, I'm going to do a bit, I've got a couple of months to do a bit more writing. Um, mm. And then I think in the studio around October, mm. kind of tentative date for it. You seem quite strict though, in, in the sense that you've, you, you set yourself these, you know, that when you do something that's the way you're going to do it, do you tend to stick to it? Um, no. Not really. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, we've put aside October for the album, but if I don't have enough great songs, mm. I'm not going to record. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but it has been a long time, so I'd like mm. to. You know, Even if you just bang out some demos, yeah. 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 Get it over and done with. Mm. So <laughs> some new like material. Yeah. Not get over no, not get over and done with, but just yeah. at least start it. Yeah. It's been a lot. It's been so long. Great. Well, thank you. It's been great to have you too. Yeah, so, no worries. We'll be at the show tomorrow night. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a great little venue. It's really yeah. small too, so yeah. Uh, if you get a hundred people in there, it's like busting, which is really fun. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That'd be nice. Well, thank you, and uh, we look forward to the, the the country and the rock and the and the bits in between. Yeah. <laughs>